Good evening, this is Pamela, and you're listening to Watchmen on the Pod. Um, we are going to continue in our daily devotional through the uh, our daily bread. Today's reading is going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 11. And it is entitled, Loving Others with Our Prayers. And it says... For we don't desire to have you uninformed, brothers, concerning our affliction, which happened to us in Asia, that we were weighed down exceedingly beyond our power, so much that we despaired even of life. Yes, we ourselves have had the sentence of death within ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead who delivered us out of so great a death and does deliver us, on whom we have set our hope that he will also still deliver us, you also helping together on our behalf by your supplication, that for the gift given to us by means of many, thanks may be given by many persons on your behalf. And the reading is, Loving Others with Our Prayers. Are people still praying for me? That was one of the first questions a missionary asked his wife whenever she was allowed to visit him in prison. He had been falsely accused and incarcerated for his faith for two years. His life was frequently in danger because of the conditions and hostility in the prison and believers around the world were earnestly praying for, praying for him. He wanted to be assured they wouldn't stop because he believed God was using their prayers in a powerful way. Our prayers for others, especially those who are persecuted for their faith, are a vital gift. Paul made this clear when he wrote the believers in Corinth about hardships he faced during his missionary journey. He was under great pressure, so much that he despaired of life itself, 2 Corinthians 1.8. But when he told them God had delivered him and described the tool he'd used to do it, we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers, verses 10-11. through 11. God moves through our prayers to accomplish great good in the lives of his people. One of the best ways to love others is to pray for them. Because through our prayers, we open the door to the help only God can provide. When we pray for others, we love them in his strength. There's none greater or more loving than he. That was written by James Bank. Here's a question. How do you love others with your prayers? In what ways can you encourage prayer for those who are persecuted for their faith? Loving and almighty God, thank you for the amazing gift of prayer and the ways you move through it. Please help me to pray faithfully for others today. Amen. I don't believe we realize that our prayers are vital. Our prayers are vital for the lost. Our prayers are vital for our brothers and sisters that is like over in China, Korea, North Korea. Oh my goodness, Iran. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. We need to keep them in our prayers. They're our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. They are part of the body. When one mourns, we all should mourn. You know, I, I think about I think about those overseas. I think about them often because, you know, they are rich in faith. Over here in America, we're more rich with material wealth. And we're starving in faith. They over there may be starving for the natural food. But they are rich in faith. 
Their faith keeps them going. Their faith keeps them risking their very life to share Jesus with others. And then you hear of the stories where they're not only sharing their faith with others of like the citizens around them, their peers and stuff, but with those who are persecuting them. Those that are hurting them. They still share their faith with them and they still tell them, I love you and God loves you and I forgive you. I mean, it's like Stephen when he was stoned with his last breath. He said, lay not this sin to their charge. How many of us in America could do that? Well, it starts now, brothers and sisters, before the persecution comes. It starts now. By you getting on your knees and on your face before God for those that are going through it. You know, before I even turned this on, I had read about Lisa Marie Presley's uh, daughters, her twin daughters that were removed from the home today because of bad photos or whatever on her ex-husband's or soon-to-be ex-husband's computer and electronics and this is just not even 24 hours after her son killed himself and I don't know about any of you but my heart is broken for this lady and I just pray for her salvation I just pray that during this time of grieving and this time of great loss that she will look up to the Father and cry out to Him. That I'm just praying that during this <laughs> humbling experience <laughs> that grace will abound. I don't know her, but I love her because Jesus died for her. We've got to love others. And as that man said, we love them through our prayers. You know, I mean, I can think of so many people that the Lord throughout my life has had me pray for. And a lot of people will be like, well, that's strange. No, it's not strange because who else is praying for them? Who else is praying for the Jim Carries? Who is praying for the Kid Rocks and the Eminem system? Who is praying for these people? Oh, somebody needs to pray for them. Somebody prayed for me. I don't know if they have mamas and papas and grandmas and grandpas or aunts or uncles. I don't know. But I do know when the Lord lays them upon my heart, I pray for their salvation. I don't want nobody to die and go to hell. I don't want nobody to not know Jesus. See, that's the most precious gift in the whole wide world. <laughs> is to come into faith and in who Jesus is and what he did for us. He died for us. He took our punishment. He endured the wrath of God. <laughs> he died so we could live. He rose again, giving us the faith that the same spirit that raised him will raise us one day. He reconciled us to God. So we can now go boldly before the throne of grace and we have a right standing relationship with the Father in heaven as adopted sons and daughters. And our spirit is crying out to Abba Father. I want others to know him. I do. We've got to love. Love them with your prayer. Think about those 
that you know we we try not to think about those that have done us wrong and, and we we want to say oh we've forgiven them we've forgiven them but the thing is every time you know you see them is there a prick in your heart if there is you haven't forgiven them you know i think of cory ten boom when she had seen the man that basically was responsible for her sister Betsy's death in the concentration camp. And she looked up and she seen him and she's like, Father, I can't. I just can't. And you know what? The Holy Spirit's like, you're right. You can't. But I can. Romans 5, 5. For God is shed. Oh, love abroad in your heart. By the Holy Spirit. God has everything that we are able to do is only because of him not because it's in us to do it's because of him oh anyway i love you all so very very much and <clears throat> i want you to think about second corinthians 8 through 11 i want you to keep Praying for those that are lost. Keep praying for those that are suffering for the kingdom of God. Pray. Pray for them. Well, you have a good night. And I will speak to you guys tomorrow. I love you all. Bye-bye.